I thank His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, the President of the Republic of Uganda, for hosting this summit and for the warm reception accorded to me and my entourage. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the G20 African Coffee Summit remains to be an important platform that brings together members of the Inter-African Coffee Organization to discuss and strategize on how to transform the coffee subsector in the region. I commend the progress made in implementation of the May 2022 Nairobi Declaration and welcome the theme for the 2023 summit which says transforming the African coffee sector through value addition. Indeed, it encapsulates well the very essence of our journey towards a thriving coffee industry. Excellencies, nearly half of African countries grow coffee, and for some of us, it constitutes a major source of our foreign exchange earnings and among the vital contributors of our GDP. Given this importance and our enormous endowment of vast arable land, favorable climate and demographic dividend of our youth labor, it is timely that we, we have the 2023 G25 summit and I want to underscore that we should use this platform to anonymously push for a declaration of coffee as a strategic commodity in harmony with the AU Agenda 2063. Promote value addition, agree on how to expand regional coffee trade, and discuss remedial measures to underlying risks to this important cash crop. Excellencies, According to the World Bank's Commodity Market Outlook reports, world coffee prices maintained a long-term positive trend with the price of Arabica coffee increasing more than twofold from an average of $2 per kilogram in 2001-2002 to $5 in 2022-23. And similarly, the price of Robusta coffee more than tripled from $0.7 per kilogram in 2001-2002 to $2.4 per kilogram in 2022-23. Such developments in coffee prices culminated into $466 billion global traded value in 2021, with Africa earning only 0.5% of the traded value. Despite the price advantage over the past 20 years, Africa remained at the tail end and it accounts for a mere 12% of the world's production and the trend in the region has been steadily declining. And this appeals for a groundbreaking solution to reverse the pattern and take actions to unlock the untapped potential of the coffee industry, capitalizing on the rising world prices and our expanding regional market of nearly 1.4 billion people. Excellencies, in Tanzania, we have continued to devise new measures aimed at consolidating successes in revamping the coffee industry. So, for example, the government has continued to increase the agricultural budget for three consecutive fiscal years to, among others, roll out fertilizer subsidy program and upscale supply and distribution of high-yield Arabica coffee seedlings free of charge through the Tanzania Coffee Board and the Tanzania Coffee Research Institute. The target is to raise and distribute 20 million seedlings per annum. In 2022-23, 17.8 million seedlings 
have been distributed so far. Other interventions encompass strengthening of the coffee research and development through the Tanzania Coffee Research Institute and due to effects of climate changes which have had detrimental effects in coffee production such as increased incidences of pests and diseases, erratic rainfall which made some areas unsuitable for coffee production. Tanzania has taken steps to mitigate the situation by developing coffee varieties which are drought resistant. We do hope that these varieties will be released in the coming few years after assessment trials in the field are completed. We have also scaled up extension services through local government in collaboration with cooperatives and introduction of a one-year certificate course in coffee quality and trade at the Moshi Cooperative University to address the shortage of extension officers. And on markets, we have introduced zonal coffee auctions such that agricultural marketing cooperatives that used to be the sole buyers are now competing with other market players and prices are benchmarked to world prices. Excellencies, on involvement of women and youth in the coffee value chain, Tanzania has made some steps in mainstreaming gender and the efforts include establishment of the Tanzania Women in Coffee Association which brings together women in the coffee value chain and encourages and empowers them to grow their business in the coffee value chain. In addition, the government has established a program to train the youth in the coffee quality and trading for the purpose of building their capacity to participate in activities along the coffee value chain and fill the gap of skilled personnel in the Tanzania coffee subsector. Excellencies, in tackling financial constraints, we have recapitalized the Tanzania Agricultural Development Bank. And in collaboration with commercial banks, we have re-established credit and export guarantee schemes to address shortfalls in collateral and introduce a facility at the Bank of Tanzania to support af affordable agricultural financing at interest rates not exceeding 9%. Some of the achievements from the above interventions include increased coffee production by 19% from 66.5 thousand tons in 2018-19 to 82.5 thousand tons in 2022-23. Foreign exchange earnings from coffee exports nearly doubled from $235.6 million in 2022-23 compared with $123.2 million in 2018-19. Coffee cultiv cultivated area increased from 218,966 hectares in 2018-19 to 265,000 hectares in 22-23. Excellencies, as we convene here today, let us renew our commitment to the transformation of African coffee. First, let us embrace value addition as our guiding principle. And I therefore call upon governments and the private sector to direct more energy and resources to acquire modern coffee processing facilities, rosteries, and quality packaging. Second, I urge our farmers to increasingly adopt eco-friendly farming methods to ensure that our coffee industry leaves a positive footprint on both the environment and the people it touches. And third, I wish to remind the Secretariat of the Inter-African Coffee Organization to fast-track development of the Africa Coffee Center of Excellence in Tanzania, as already agreed. And I assure you that 
the Tanzania government will provide all the required support. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, I'm pleased to note that Tanzania will be hosting the third G25 African Coffee Summit next year, 2024. And in that regard, on behalf of President Dr. Samia Sulu Hassan, I wish to warmly welcome you to Tanzania for our next summit and continue with our journey to transform the coffee subsector. Together we can. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Excellency. A round of applause. We look forward to meeting you in Tanzania next year. Excellency, Prime Minister of the Republic of Kenya. Your Excellency, Honorable Yueri Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda, Your Excellency's Head of State and Government, the Chairman of the Inter-Africa Coffee Organization, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I first take this opportunity to sincerely thank you, Your Excellency, Yueri Kaguta Museveni, for hosting this very important summit. Equally, let me convey the salutations and solidarity of His Excellency President William Samoy Ruto to you and to the people of Uganda. It is gratifying and encouraging that the African community gathers here in Kampala to reflect on and celebrate the Africa coffee sector. Indeed, this summit is an affirmation of our collective commitment to support transformative reforms in our coffee sector. As African leaders, we also laud and commend initiatives under the Inter-African Coffee Organization of transforming the African coffee sector through value addition, a theme that resonates well with our aspirations. It is on this firm commitment that Kenya hosted the first G25 African Coffee Summit in Nairobi from 25th to 27th May 2022, which was attended by 41 African countries. During the Nairobi Summit, the African coffee producing countries made the following declarations on the Africa coffee sector. First, to include coffee among the strategic agricultural commodities. This will enable the continent to identify, formulate and drive the implementation of policies and solutions for higher returns in the sector. Second, to support production and research, enhance transparency and traceability of origins encourage youth employment and empowerment of women, allocate more land for coffee production, incentivize farmers, support coffee research, and offer technical assistance to farmers. To enhance, third, to enhance access to finance through government-backed schemes, African Coffee Facility Fund, and support for the African Export-Import Bank, AFRIEXIM, the African Development Bank, and the African Union. And fourth, to address value addition and domestic consumption by opening up domestic markets and share knowledge on the health benefits of coffee and investment in value addition. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Coffee is an important export commodity for many African countries and has the potential of unlocking the continent's prosperity, foster inclusive growth, boost economic growth, and lead to rapid transformation of the continent. Your Excellency, let me echo some of your statistics. African coffee accounts for about 12% of the world's coffee production 
making it the second largest most traded commodity in Africa after oil. In the year 2021-2022, for example, Africa's coffee production registered a dismal performance of 19.27 million bags of coffee compared to a global production of 167.2 million bags in the same period. This is a paltry 11.5% against a potential of 40% attributable to Africa's comparative advantage in land acreage, rainfall, and fertile soils. As a continent, we must develop appropriate strategies to reverse this negative trend and reclaim our position on the global coffee platform. Ladies and gentlemen, domestic consumption of coffee, of African coffee remains dismal. Africa consumes less than 10% of our value added coffee, while consumption of imported coffee is on the increase. At the same time, Africa is a net importer of about 12 million bags of coffee, much of which is value added. Paradoxically, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, Africa exports 11 million bags, mainly raw coffee, and imports more value added coffee. In the process, the continent loses much on job creation, foreign exchange, to mention but a few. In the Kenyan context, coffee is grown in 33 counties out of a total of 47 counties by an estimated 800,000 smallholder growers aggregated into 590 cooperative societies and 2,700 coffee estates with a total acreage of 109,000 hectares dedicated to coffee production. Kenya recognizes the strategic role the coffee subsector plays towards the country's economic growth and vertical integration. Specifically, coffee is a major source of employment, poverty alleviation, food security, foreign exchange, and generally contributes to the livelihood of many Kenyans and is estimated to support directly and indirectly over 5 million Kenyans along the coffee value chain. Kenya pledges for sustainable development to prioritize agriculture as one of the top six pillars in the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto where all cash crop production is nationalized with compensation of farmers. Cognizance of this, Kenya has prioritized coffee as one of the quick turnaround key subsectors in our economic development model, popularly known as the bottom-up economic transformative agenda, better, as espoused in the Kenya Kwanzaa Government Manifesto for 2022 to 2027. Looking at the historical performance, the coffee subsector attained remarkable growth soon after independence, leading to the growth of an all-time high production of 130,000 metric tons in 1987-1988 during the famous coffee boom. Currently, coffee production has been declining due to challenges such as climate change vagaries, perennial price volatility, market access, and low domestic consumption, among others. The decline in production has adversely affected farmers' earnings and their livelihoods. Your Excellencies, Kenya has come up with various initiatives to reverse the declining performance of the coffee sector. The initiatives include e-voucher fertilizer input subsidy program for coffee farmers, rollout of the coffee revitalization program, establishment of the Cherry Advanced Revolving Fund, coffee credit financing through the establishment of commodities fund to provide affordable finance credit for coffee farming and other agricultural produce, as well as review of the subsector's legislation. I am convinced that these reform initiatives
will bear fruit by increasing Kenya's coffee production from the current 51,000 metric tons realized in 2021-2022 to 100,000 metric tons by the year 2025, thereby contributing to an increase in Africa's coffee production globally. The African continental free trade area provides opportunities for the acceleration of the inter-African trade. We must therefore take advantage of this vast market potential for Africa by promoting domestic consumption of and boosting African-grown coffee besides boosting trade position in the global market. Kenya is a good example of promoting into African coffee trade in coffee. Kenya's coffee imports from African countries have grown tremendously over a five-year period from three metric tons in 2019-2010 to 857 metric tons in 2022-2023. In the same period, Kenya's coffee exports to African countries reduced from 1,064 metric tons to 212 metric tons, a decrease of 80%. Not very good statistics there. What does this probably show? That Kenya is at the forefront of promoting into Africa coffee trade, while majority are not embracing the spirit of the African uh, free trade area. Your Excellencies, with these few remarks, I look forward to fruitful deliberations and concrete outcomes that will indeed bolster the share of Africa in the global coffee market. I wish to assure you of my commitment and support in this endeavor. Finally, I wish to extend our sincere appreciation to the leadership of Ayakao for organizing such a robust event. I thank you, Asanta Sana, God bless you all, and I will go and take my cup of coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. The Prime Cabinet Secretary of Kenya, yes, coffee is served, and it's delicious. So it's Uganda, the power of Africa, and the birthplace of Robusta coffee, while Ethiopia is the birthplace of Arabica. Uh, Your Excellencies, allow me now to request the ministers leading various delegations. We have quite a number, but we will give each strictly three minutes to give you a brief statement so that we can all capture our views and move together before signing the declaration. We will have the Minister of Agriculture, Livestock and Rural Development from the Republic of Equatorial Guinea and will be followed by the Minister of Trade from the Republic of Togo. Three minutes each and I hope the translation is working. Equatorial Guinea, Honorable Minister. Excelentísimo señor Presidente de la Hermana República de Uganda. Excelentísimos señores Presidente de los 25 Estados Solidarios y Miembros de la Unión Interafricana de Cambio. Excelentísimos señores Ministros de Agricultura aquí presente. Excelentísimo señor Secretario General de la Organización Señores representantes de las organizaciones y asociaciones de productores de café, señoras y señores, séame permitido, señor presidente, extender a los aquí presentes los cordiales y fraternales saludos de su excelencia Obiangema Bazogo, presidente de la República de Guinea Ecuatorial, eh, quien por agendas, agenda interna de su última hora no ha podido asistir en este magno evento africano, pero que por su espíritu panafricanista sigue de cerca el desarrollo del mismo al tiempo que asegura 
el perfecto éxito de esta cumbre. Excelentísimo señor presidente, debo expresar mi gratitud y la profunda satisfacción en tanto la iniciativa de la cumbre como la atención prestada, así como la perfecta organización reservada a mi humilde persona y a la delegación que me acompaña. La delegación de Guinea Ecuatorial que tengo el honor de representar en esta cumbre agradece y felicita la iniciativa de la Organización Interafricana de Café y del Gobierno de Uganda por reunir a los africanos productores de café en tanto para analizar la situación actual de ese producto que ha sido la base de la economía que ha aumentado la renta per cápita, per cápita en nuestros países. Que también la ocasión sea propicia para estudiar y analizar la problemática de la producción de café, su proyección para la efectiva transformación de este sector para el bienestar. Como es conocido, la República Ecuatoria de Guinea, de mi país, ha sido uno de los productores más importantes, especialmente de robusta variedad, que en el pasado ha promovido un fuerte compromiso y supervivencia, todo ello gracias a las condiciones naturales de nuestras tierras favorables, ricas y productivas para la mejor producción. But at present time, the production has decreased drastically due to drastically severe factors, mainly external factors. The vol volatility price driven by consumer market price driven by consumer market and other internal factors and other internal factors. Uh, the aging of plantations, lack of research and improvement of productivity, the reduction of agricultural labor force, lack of attraction of young people in production, the, the absence of local processing product to add value of the product. These factors have contributed to the loss of farmers' interest in calf and coffee cultivation. This, His Excellency Mr. President, Distinguished Minister, despite these negative effects the gov that we have highlighted at the beginning, the government of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea are aware of the importance of the coffee sector in its economy, of the coffee sector has designed a program of economic diversification towards Horizon 2035 through which the agriculture subsector and agriculture sector is envisaged as capable of guaranteeing both the United Nations social development goals of the United Nations and the objectives of the African Union 263. However, the country is initiating the rehabilitation of the coffee, coffee uh, through a private company, Matro Guisa, in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture, through the establishment of 100 hectares of nurseries Robusta of varieties of pure stock tested and adopted to our soil environmental condition. The role of the Ministry of Agriculture is to sensitize and attract the population, the promotion and extension of the coffee sector through the national territory. The delegate participants, the delegation in Equatorial Guinea supports the declaration of Kampala for 2023 20, for the promotion and development of the coffee sector and for infecting transformation in a sense of the product in favor of producers themselves. We support at the same time that it, the, the scientific research for the innovation of the sector integrated into the value chain in order to attract young people, to attract young people to production process in order to process in such a way that we will be able to increase the productivity and production as well as the self-esteem in production of the of uh, the population to promote the local transformation of product and facilitate increased consumption of our own products because as has been to say consume what you produce and produce what you consume all these will avoid the high production products from abroad as highlighted here by main speakers in the same way we must ensure the quality and control of these products in order to guarantee the health of our population. At the same time, in order to fulfill, it is recommended to the uh, 
to effectively promote coffee sector and its effective continuity to 